Thank you very much. I want to thank Sages and I want to thank Jason so much for allowing us to share the podium together. It's a, just an honor. Um, hopefully today we're going to cover some of what in the U.S. is the talk that goes around laparoscopic and robotic surgery. I have no disclosures um, related to this topic. I do have a number of patents related to medical technologies. Um, I think pertinent to this conversation about laparoscopic versus robotic is something Dave Schetz taught me, which is that um, calculated risk or where we make all the calculations and our patients take on all the risk. And so I think we have to think about that as we evaluate new technologies. Our objectives today are to reflect upon common discourse that's now going on about whether we proceed laparoscopically with patients or whether we proceed robotically. I think we need to look back at where technology was 30 years ago. And then um, I want to offer some editorial um, comments without really resolution of the challenges, but at least recognize here's our challenges that we have. Our current drivers in the U.S. in medical care really um, require some cultural change. It requires some improvement, um, performance improvement methodology, as well as the opportunity for cost reduction and containment. So in fact, are we back to the future much like the movie? In other words, would the car on the left, the de original DeLorean with the time capacitor flux, get us just as far as the car on the right? And how much different does that look than what a laparoscopic setup looked like in 1990 versus the nice shiny silver one with better wing doors and everything on the right? Or in fact, are we having really the same outcomes with two different products, one that's much more expensive than the other? So we're gonna play a little game show here. The game show is called, What's My Line? Um, so I'm going to read to you data or information from various articles of different time periods, and I will ask you to sit there and think to yourself, does this apply to laparoscopic surgery or does this apply to robotic surgery? And then I'll reveal to you the time in which that was um, published, and I think you'll find it interesting. All right, so first of all, is this lap regarding laparoscopic or robotic surgery? The cost of technology products. So in places where I don't want to use the word laparoscopic or robotic as we've done in the original article, I'll put technology, technology products, so I'll hide it. The cost of technology products was evaluated in terms of the initial purchase price, replacement charges, equipment maintenance, and labor costs for cleaning, repackaging, inspection, et cetera. Operating room time averaged 203 minutes, and the length of the oper operative procedure only counted for 96 minutes. From this data, it appears that hospitals with more than 300 cases per year, the cost of using these technologies are similar. So think to yourself, is this laparoscopic or is this robotic? This article was published in 1993. Alrighty, the cost of new technology are typically borne out in the first years of use, and this technology is no exception with high cost of purchase, maintenance, operative equipment overshadowing savings gained by shorter length of stay. Again, I ask you the same question. Does this refer to laparoscopic surgery or does this refer to robotic surgery? This article was published in 2004, refers to robotic surgery. Justification of new technology should be a strategic decision made by informed management that balances the short-term goal of patient safety with longer-term goals of quality and growth. It should not be relegated to an accounting function without foresight of long-term strategy. Again, sit there and think to yourself, does this apply laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery? In this case, is an article from 2015. Another article concludes: the mean number of resident technology cases decreased significantly. The proportion of standard cases performed by PGY-5s significantly increased at the expense of other resident cases. Should standard cases, and standard in this case in 1990s would refer to, lapar would refer to open as opposed to laparoscopic, standard today refer refers to laparoscopic versus robotic. Should standard cases be performed to assure resident experience if technology is not available? This was from 1993. Cost of medical care has increased from X billion to 3X billion over the last 10 years. Contributing to this in each hospital is the high cost of new technology in the operating room. Again, ask yourself, does this refer to laparoscopic procedures or robotic procedures? This article was published in 1993. New technology should be evaluated as early as possible, re-evaluated frequently. The current reimbursement system tends to freeze the status quo. So cost-effective new technologies are at a competitive, at least short-term disadvantage relative to cost-ineffective existing ones. Again, ask yourself, laparoscopic or robotic? That was in 2007, refers to the robot. Finally, the evidence isn't strong enough to determine whether or not technology is better than traditional surgery. 
So you can see the bar graphs having to do with length of stay with a variety of different procedures there. This is from 2015. Finally, our results show that while the operating time for most cases is acceptable for this new technology, the range of operating times is great and the relative lack of predictability in procedures mean that efficient utilization is very hard to, um, is very hard to obtain or to standardize. That's from 1991. Alrighty, so what's my line? It is very difficult, as you can tell, to differentiate our arguments about laparoscopic versus robotic surgery, whether we're talking 30 years ago or whether we're talking today. So our challenges remain the same over time when it comes to evaluating new technologies. Our ultimate goal continues to be improvement of patient outcomes in a sustainable fashion. I want to make some comments about training. Arguing that ro robots ruin training because individuals might not be able to use a laparoscope to perform the same procedure, therefore they shouldn't use a robot, I think is very similar to arguing that you shouldn't ride in a car unless you know how to ride a horse, because horses preceded cars. Or saying that if you don't know how to use a kerosene lamp, why would you use electricity to turn on a light bulb? Same thing with indoor plumbing versus an outhouse. I would also argue that in the 40s and 50s, as cautery became more prevalent, that there were a lot of surgeons that got better, safer, and better hemostasis because they weren't as good at small suture ligature, and they became very good with cautery. Even the letter from the Surgeon General in the U.S. in the 40s mandating basically colostomy being performed in any type of open colon situation still to this day affects how people get operations. And so we're slow to pick up on new technology. I would also argue competition needs to start taking place. Can you imagine what your laptop would look like if Apple and other companies never came along to um, go along inside? I suspect our laptops would still be so heavy and most of us would be having sore backs. Same thing for a cell phone. If only one company controlled cell phone markets, again, I would argue that, um, that those cell phones would still very much look like backpacks that you carried around. So I think competition would be good and it would be helpful. I would argue these, both these robots here can be trained to do tasks within several millimeters and the one on the right can do it on objects up to 50 kilograms. Several millimeters of accuracy, up to 50 kilograms. The cost of both of these robots together would be under $50,000. So, in, the current, in our current quality care medical home models, would you want to purchase a robot? You'd have to drive value with it. You'd have to show a um, need to increase or maintain your um, quality. We need systems that um, reward cost-effective health care as well as invite new technology and um, could, obtain both, um, could accomplish both objectives. So finally, I don't want to be back in time any more than I already have taken. I really appreciate the opportunity to um, talk to you today. Thank you for Jason and the opportunity to be here, and um, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you.